This evening, first, a tragic accident on Montrose Public Road claims the life of a 31-year-old after a high-speed collision with a minibus. We'll bring you the latest details. Next, the government issues a stern warning to employers lagging in a national insurance scheme payments as retirees struggle to claim their rightful pensions. Find out what measures are being taken. Then, two Ghana Defense Force soldiers are remanded to prison after being caught with over 300 pounds of cannabis. We'll have the full story on this shocking arrest. Also, a drug bus near the Wisma Bridge leads to the seizure of over 55 pounds of marijuana and the arrest of the suspect. We'll tell you how police intercepted the operation. And in Venezuela, tensions rise as thousands take to the streets, accusing President Nicolas Maduro of rigging the recent election. The government's response has been swift and severe. Stay tuned for these stories and more coming up on tonight's podcast. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for July 31st, 2024. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, a deadly accident on Montrose Public Road has claimed the life of 31-year-old Akeem Lewis. The incident occurred around 10 a.m. on Tuesday, July 30th and involved a collision between Lewis's car and a minibus. Lewis, a self-employed resident of Boxton, was driving his car PAF 9125 West along the public road at high speed when he lost control and swerved into the rear left side of a minibus, which was also heading west. After the initial impact, Lewis's car struck the southern footpath and rolled several times before stopping. Emergency medical technicians transported Lewis to the Georgetown Public Hospital, where he was treated for multiple injuries. Despite efforts by medical staff, Lewis succumbed to his injuries. The minibus driver, a 57-year-old from Erie Hall, Maikoni, is in police custody and assisting with the investigation. Authorities continue to look into the circumstances surrounding the accident. In other news, the government has issued a stern warning to employers who fail to pay their national insurance scheme contribution on time. The senior minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, made this announcement at the NIS graduation ceremony for new inspectors and emphasized that the government will not tolerate such negligence. Dr. Singh highlighted that the government and NIS have managed to clear up 18,000 backlog cases since August 2020, but many retirees still face difficulties getting their pensions. He pointed out that this issue often arises because some employers do not pay the required contributions for their employees, leaving retirees without the benefits they are entitled to. Dr. Singh said, this is not acceptable, mentioning a recent effort that compelled several private security companies to pay contributions for over 2,100 security guards previously not covered. The minister made it clear that the government has zero tolerance for employers who fail to make timely NIS payments. He urged employers to promptly address any back payments and ensure they comply with the law which mandates the deduction and payment of employee and employer contributions to the NIS. Dr. Singh also advised citizens to check their NIS records and contributions regularly and encouraged self-employed individuals to start contributing early to ensure they receive benefits in the future. Moving on, the two Ghana Defense Force ranks who were intercepted and caught with over 300 pounds of narcotics were remanded to prison when they appeared at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Tuesday, July 30th. 40-year-old Edward McCallman, a GDF rank from Caneville East Bank Demerara, and 24-year-old John Johnson, a GDF rank from Tamiri Docks East Bank Demerara, appeared before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman where the charge was read to them. They pleaded not guilty and will return to court on August 19, 2024. Special branch officers on other ranks nabbed the duo on Saturday last behind the Botanical Gardens. Both soldiers dressed in uniform were stopped based on intelligence suggesting their involvement in narcotics trafficking. Upon searching the vehicle, police found 49 large parcels containing leaves, seeds and stems suspected to be cannabis. The soldiers were taken to the East Lepenitans Police Station along with the bus and deceased cannabis, which weighed 316 pounds. This is the second pair of Ghana Defense Force soldiers caught with cannabis and remanded over the past few weeks. 
Stick around when we return. Drug bust at Wisma Bridge, over 55 pounds of marijuana seized and one arrested. An emancipation village at Main Street showcases African fashion and artistry. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop Minds Educational Institute Offering preschool, nursery and primary levels Finally a school that is every parent's dream Located at 69 Crow Street Offering academic excellence Trained qualified teachers Small class sizes Personalized gear And one-to-one -one attention for your little ones At Smart Minds Register for full-time or evening classes Daily practice pass exam papers For proficiency at the grade 2, 4 and 6 assessment And CXE exam preparedness or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind located at 69 Earl Street or call 231 4885 or 600 9229 to enroll now. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture offered at amazing prices will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. And Linden intercepted a drug operation near the Visma Bridge, resulting in the seizure of over 55 pounds of suspected marijuana and the arrest of one individual on Monday, July 30th. Reports say that around 1 a.m., officers on mobile patrol observed three men on two unmarked RX motorcycles heading to Visma from the eastern side of the bridge. As police attempted to stop the men, they abruptly halted, dismounted, and threw two large plastic bags over the bridge into the river before fleeing. The men tried to make their escape, but the ranks managed to apprehend one of the three suspects, 23-year-old Kieran Lane, an unemployed resident of One Mile Extension, Visma. The police quickly retrieved the discarded bags from the river, which contained leaf season stems suspected to be cannabis. Lane was arrested and transported to the Wisma police station. The seized substance was tested and confirmed to be marijuana, totaling over 55 pounds. Lane remains in custody pending charges. On a different note, as Ghana gears up for its Emancipation Day celebrations at the National Park on Thursday, August 1st, the Emancipation Village on Main Street is gaining momentum with its vibrant display of African fashions and craftsmanship. Sister Pen Goyan, one of the organizers, said that the village has been steadily growing and now spans from Church Street to Kwame Street. We have been here for approximately 26 years in this avenue, quite a long time, right? When we started, it was very small, you know, 
but over the years we have grown. As you can see, we have approximately, some of them are now setting up, but we have approximately 40 vendors out here. The Village is an annual event hosted by the African Cultural and Development Association. The vendors come every year because what it is, is that, as we say, all roads lead to the National Park on the 1st of August. So persons know that the vendors are out here and they bring out their produce, their goods, and they display and people come and they buy the things that they want so that when they go into the national park, they look special. The village is a cultural hub for the festivities. It features an array of sunny African outfits, shoes, bags, and exquisite jewelry, offering attendees a unique opportunity to immerse themselves in the rich traditions and styles of African heritage. What is unique about this is that most, if not all, of the things that are here are things that these people make themselves. You know, I mean, there's some of the things that probably some of the vendors' clothing they may purchase, but they're all made, you know, by people of African descent. This vibrant marketplace enhances the celebratory atmosphere, providing both the locals and visitors a chance to celebrate Emancipation Day in style while honoring the deep cultural roots that shape Guyana's history. Here's a glimpse of what some of the vendors have to offer. I have a lot of clothes. I have skirts, dresses. I got clothes from baby, newborn, as soon as you come out of the mother womb. Right up to till when God is ready for you. We are here to make everyone to look like an African. You know, it's an African celebration. We have a lot of stuff we brought from Africa. The children's wear, we have for our mommies, our daddies, the ladies, and everything. And we are now, we are giving on our own, we are giving 20% and 30% discount just for this today and tomorrow. So we want everybody to come and buy and look like an African. I am Demelia Smart Van der Soup, one of the beautiful face behind Charming Treasure GY. So we specialize in accessories, whether it's an earring, a necklace, a shoe, a bag, we specialize. So today I'm out here on Main Street and I'm encouraging you to come and shop your beautiful pieces as you can see. Our pieces are unique. They can go with any one of your outfit. They could add a class, they could add a charm, and they could add the glam that you're looking for. This is cow skin and this is um sheep skin. And we export mainly export to the islands, USA, England. Okay, so are you willing very, to Very, very, you know, very few people buy it locally. It's only like when we come in a show here that we get local customers. This is Cummins Leather Establishment. We've been in the business over four or five years. Don't go away after the break. Harris wipes out Trump's lead in polls of U.S. presidential race. And at least 22 dead as tail end of Typhoon Gemi lashes China. Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained, qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized care, and one-to-one -one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full-time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind, located at 69 Old Street, or call 231-4885 or 600-9229 to enroll now. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those swords. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Come 
allowed to make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Main Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture offered at amazing prices will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables. We have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and the around the world. CARICOM leaders cautiously responded to Venezuela's recent presidential election with Ghana's president, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, emphasizing the importance of a credible process, including vote counting and verification. While Dominica's Prime Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt, congratulated President Maduro on his re-election, recognizing Venezuela's regional importance, other leaders like St. Lucia's Philip J. Peer stressed the need for peace and fair audit process. St. Vincent Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalves, a Maduro ally, urged CARICOM to issue a supportive statement highlighting Venezuela's sophisticated election system. Meanwhile, in Venezuela, thousands of protesters have flooded the streets of Caracas, alleging that President Nicolas Maduro rigged the presidential election held on Sunday. In response, officials from Maduro's government have issued threats of detention against opposition leader Maria Corina Machado and Edmundo Gonzalez, accusing them of plotting a coup. Al Jazeera's Teresa Bo reports. Again on the streets of Caracas, protesters gathered in front of the United Nations office to denounce the government of Nicolás Maduro, which they believe stole last Sunday's vote. We must protest in a peaceful manner. We should not fall into the provocations they place for us. What they want to do is to make Venezuelans face each other. We were able to have Edmundo obtain 70% of the votes. We united a country. Venezuelans who once believed in Chavismo are with us today. The Electoral Commission declared Maduro the winner with 51% of the votes. But the opposition says they can prove there was fraud. Even 48 hours after the elections happened, the Electoral Council had still not published the results and the tally sheets of how people voted. In fact, the website continues to be down. On the other hand, the opposition created a parallel website where they say they were able to get 73% of the tally sheets in the country, where they say there is clear evidence that Edmundo González is the true winner. However, with the security forces, the armed forces on their side, the government has a clear advantage, no matter how the majority of the population voted. The government says their system was hacked. President Nicolás Maduro addressed the nation, saying that what is happening in Venezuela is another coup, sponsored by the United States. He showed videos of people detained, saying they were paid by the opposition. We have identified a criminal band that is armed to the teeth and works with Mrs. Machado and Mr. González Orutia directly. I make you responsible, Mr. González Orutia, of what is happening in Venezuela of the criminal violence, of the delinquency, of the injured, of the dead, of the destruction. You are going to be responsible. Violent clashes have continued between protesters and security forces. The government says over 700 people have been detained. The United Nations expressed concern. Any electoral disputes uh, should be <coughs> resolved peacefully and we need to ensure the full transparency of the election results, including, as we've told you yesterday, the immediate breakdown of the, of the votes uh, by polling stations. And that's what many countries around the world, including leftist governments like Colombia and Brazil, also want to see. 
Millions in Venezuela are angry and frustrated. In a country that's been struggling with a political and economic crisis that's been worsened by U.S. sanctions. Many call Maduro a dictator and say they want him gone, no matter the price they have to pay. Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera, Buenos Aires. Torrential rains and flooding in China's southern Hunan province have claimed the lives of at least four people and forced thousands to evacuate as water levels reach record highs. In response, China has initiated a U.S. $69 million emergency fund to support recovery efforts, Al Jazeera's Laura Westbrook reports. Days of heavy rain overwhelmed barriers in China's Hunan province, flooding people's homes with muddy water. Emergency workers rescued people trapped as waters rose in this village. Some could only escape through their windows. It was so dark, the water was up to my waist. It was very deep and murky, and I couldn't tell what I was stepping on. Thousands of people have been forced from their homes. This is one of four schools in the area being used as a shelter. The downpours were caused by the remnants of Typhoon Gaimi that made landfall in China's southern Fujian province last week. That led to waters breaching three dikes along the Zhuanshui River. Much of China has been battling torrential rain and flooding in recent weeks, with at least 15 provinces now on emergency alert. They triggered landslides and cut off villages. Much needed supplies have been flown in by helicopter. In the northeast, another low pressure weather system caused heavy downpours that flooded large areas of farmland. Authorities warn the heavy rain could impact the grain harvest. Experts say climate change is making this kind of extreme weather more common. One of the if impacts of global warming is that it tends to heat up the ocean. And so therefore there will be more moisture going into the atmosphere. These uh, typhoons, when they make landfall, because you have all this moisture coming in, will therefore tend to bring uh, much heavier rain to these places where they were not used to. The rain is set to continue in the north in the coming days. China's leaders are warning controlling floods this summer will be difficult as major waterways like the Yellow River are likely to overflow. And with the typhoon season set to continue into August, the government is likely to come under more pressure to protect those who are vulnerable. Laura Westbrook, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. U.S. polls suggest Kamala Harris has erased Donald Trump's lead in the race for the White House. On Tuesday, she attended a campaign rally in Georgia, an important battleground state, Al Jazeera's Phil Levin reports. Jay Trump, and I approve this message. Him on one side, her on the other. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. And right in the middle, you've got Georgia. They're here for Harris. Thousands of supporters lined up in the state capital Atlanta on Tuesday to hear the Democrats' almost certain presidential nominee. Yeah, yeah. I know that she's going to fight for us, for our women's rights, and for our democracy. I'm very happy that somebody is running against Donald Trump that I think is going to win. Harris's sixth visit this year. So the momentum in this race is shifting. And there are signs that Donald Trump is feeling it. But the first since she launched her presidential campaign. And that is for good reason. See, Georgia is really, really important. Traditionally, this state has veered towards the Republicans. But in 2020, Joe Biden won it, albeit with a very small victory, just 11,000 votes, which is tiny in a state of nearly 11 million people. And the Democrats are determined to do whatever they can to make sure it stays blue. Georgia's a tough state to win. Yes, it is. You think she can do it, really? You know, it's hard, but... Um you know what? If a man by the name of Barack Hussein Obama can get it done, then she can get it done. <laughs> Harris's camp is targeting disillusioned Republicans here, including those frustrated by former President Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election when he asked Georgia's Secretary of State to find enough votes to cancel out Biden's win. But they're also feeling buoyed by a surge of excitement following months of apathy from voters who saw a choice between two old men. The Harris campaign is leaning into that. I'm so happy to be here, Atlanta. Rapper Megan Thee Stallion joining Harris here. Endorsements from pop stars helping target younger voters, a group Joe Biden was struggling with. 
and providing fuel for social media directly to the feeds of those who may vote for the first time and swing this the Democrats way. This is not going to be easy. This is hard work, but we like hard work. Hard work is good work. So Georgia, today I ask you, are you ready to get to work? Almost 30 years after Atlanta hosted the Olympics, the question here, who will be the big winner of this race come November? Phil Lavelle, Al Jazeera, Atlanta, Georgia. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the three day weather forecast. And that's it TV2 headline news for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and on Friday at 5.30 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful emancipation.